We've all heard that muscle is important for longevity, that having more muscle is going to protect you against aging and death. That is true. It's consistently been shown that people with more muscle have a lower risk of mortality and other chronic diseases. However, you don't see a lot of bodybuilders living very long. In fact, they actually live quite short. And virtually every centenarian doesn't lift weights and they're not muscular. In this video, I'm going to clarify some of the misconceptions about this topic. And I'll share some important things you need to remember when trying to increase your muscle for longevity, because otherwise it might have the opposite effect. First, is muscle actually beneficial for longevity? Yes, there are many studies indicating that the elderly people with more muscle mass live longer and they have a reduced risk of some chronic diseases. With age, you see a progressive decline in muscle mass, which increases the risk of mortality. This process already starts in your 30s, and that's why also the centenarians don't have a lot of muscle. They've lost it. Having low muscle mass is called sarcopenia and this skyrockets your risk of falls, frailty and mortality. Sarcopenia is medically defined as having low muscle mass, low muscle strength and low physical performance. A 2022 meta-analysis found that sarcopenia was associated with a 100% higher risk of mortality. Physiologically, muscle improves your metabolic health and reduces the risk of obesity and diabetes. Mechanistically, muscle protects against falls, frailty and fractures. You just become more robust. The caveat to this is that in these studies, the people who have more muscle mass also are are generally healthier. Because they're healthier, their body is able to maintain the muscle into their elderly years. So the centenarians, they obviously don't look muscular, but they are significantly more muscular than their peers were back in a few decades ago. And for them, it's mostly mediated by their genetics, their healthy lifestyle, and obviously they also engage in some physical activity like working and gardening. However, if you don't have centenarian genetics and you don't have a particularly physically active lifestyle embedded into your life, then the most effective way to increase your muscle mass and strength is to do resistance training. And it has been found that the elderly people who do strength training have up to 46% lower risk of all cause mortality compared to those who don't do strength training. So the people who live very long, they don't necessarily lift weights, but they are healthy. But at the same time, the elderly people who do lift weights have a lower risk of mortality, which means that strength training still has independent benefits if you are otherwise healthy. This creates an important distinction, muscle mass versus muscle strength. Pure muscle mass itself isn't nearly as important as what you do to attain it. Having more muscle means that you have a quality diet and you're also engaged in exercise. When researchers look at these things separately among the elderly, they find that muscle strength mediates a lot of the association between muscle mass and longevity, and that having muscle mass alone doesn't explain the reduced risk. A 2014 study on dialysis patients found that those with low muscle strength had a much higher risk of death than those with low muscle mass. The difference between individuals with low muscle strength and sarcopenia, which includes having low muscle mass and low muscle strength, wasn't very big compared to the difference between having low muscle mass and low muscle strength. So a lot of the increased risk of death from sarcopenia appears to be mediated by having low muscle strength. Muscle strength is arguably a bigger sign of overall health and vitality. You can also have adequate amounts of muscle mass while still being overweight. That's why, in my opinion, and how I've structured my workouts as well, is to focus more on the muscle strength component to increase the muscle quality, not just the muscle mass. Research on resistance training has shown that although you do see an increase in strength and muscle both when you're lifting weights, they're not always mutually inclusive and they can be obtained in different proportions. You can build strength and improve your muscle quality with pretty much every type of resistance training, calisthenics, weightlifting, kettlebells, etc. The key is just progressive over Overload, increasing the amount of reps and sets you do over time. What drives the muscle mass side of the equation besides training is also adequate nutrition and calorie intake. You need to be consuming adequate amounts of calories and protein to build muscle. And I think this is where a lot of people make a disservice or a mistake to their health by just consuming too many calories and starting to gain weight. Yes, they're gaining muscle, but they're also gaining too much body fat. There is no healthy obesity, even if you're exercising. They found that there is no metabolic healthy obesity and the components of metabolic syndrome, such as blood pressure and lipids, increase linearly with increasing BMI. Being overweight also reduces the benefits you get from muscle strength and muscle mass. A recent UK study on over 400,000 participants tested the association between grip strength obesity and mortality. It was found that a stronger grip was associated with an 8% decreased risk of mortality. However, they found that a BMI over 35 and abdominal obesity were strong predictors of mortality independent of grip strength. This means that if you're strong but fat, then you will 
still see an increase in mortality because of the fatness. So the lesson here is to, yes, focus on increasing your muscle quality and muscle strength, but not chase mass just for the sake of chasing mass. First of all, muscle strength is more important than muscle mass. And second of all, becoming too bulky or just gaining too much body fat actually mitigates the benefits you get from having muscle strength. So how much muscle are we talking about? There's obviously two components that you need to keep in mind, having adequate amounts of muscle and maintaining a lower body fat, which I'm gonna cover both. Sarcopenia is accurately measured with a DEXA scan, which is the gold standard for body composition measurements. It measures your appendicular lean mass, which reflects the amount of muscle in your arms and legs. An appendicular lean mass index below seven kilograms per square meter or less than 20 kilograms in men and less than 5.5 kilograms per square meter or less than 15 kilograms in women is categorized as sarcopenia. Anything below that is defined as sarcopenia, which is linked to a higher risk of mortality and frailty. For long-term health and fitness, you want to be at least in the 75th percentile of your age group. Secondly, looking at your body fat percentage with the DEXA scan can also be important to make sure that you're not too overweight. In people aged 40 or older, a body fat percentage over 35 in women is linked to a higher risk of mortality. In men, it's anything about 30%. For women, there's less association between body fat and mortality, but for men, it's better to have a body fat below 50 percent for maximal risk reduction. Keep in mind that these numbers might change based on the measurement that you're using. The DEXA scan uses a different scale for body fat measurements than using the calipers or something like that. So 15% for males is actually extremely lean. Everyone's always asking me what do I put into my protein shake? I'll tell you exactly what. It's 30 grams of whey protein, 10 grams of collagen and one teaspoon of raw cacao. I blend it up with water and ice cubes and it becomes incredibly creamy. Whey protein is the most bioavailable protein source in the world. Many studies have found that whey protein supplementation improves muscle growth and strength when combined with resistance training. Whey protein stimulates muscle protein synthesis 31% more than soy protein and 132% more than casein after resistance training. Whey protein also promotes glutathione production, which is the body's main antioxidant that supports immunity. The brand of whey protein I use, Nordcode, has pure organic whey from grass-fed cows from the Alps. It's the highest quality and cleanest whey protein in the world. I combine it with a Nordcode Complete Collagen that has added glycine, which is beneficial for joints and skin health. Nordcode also has organic raw cacao with lion's mane and chaga extracts, which improves cardiovascular health and energy. All of this for only 250 calories, over 30 grams of protein to maximize protein synthesis and 10 grams of collagen for skin anti-aging benefits. If you're allergic to dairy, then Nordcoat also has plant-based protein powder made from pea, hemp seed and rice protein with added MCTs and maca. You can get a 10% discount by using the code SEAM10 at livehealthy.com forward slash collections forward slash Nordcoat. Another important component that needs to be discussed is cardiorespiratory fitness. Muscle strength and cardiorespiratory fitness are both linked to longevity, but which one is more important? A 2000 2018 UK Biobank study looked at data from over half a million people. They saw that the individuals with the highest grip strength only had a 21% reduction in all-cause mortality compared to those with the lowest grip strength. Those with the highest cardiorespiratory fitness, on the other hand, had a 35% lower risk compared to those with the lowest cardiorespiratory fitness. So when you compare head to head, then cardiorespiratory fitness yields a greater reduction in mortality risk than having higher strength. However, they also found that the individuals with the highest cardiorespiratory fitness and the highest muscle strength had the lowest mortality risk. 47% compared to those with the lowest fitness and strength. This obviously means that you want to do both. You want to do cardio, but you also want to do strength training. The caveat is that in that study, there was no difference between having the highest grip strength and intermediate levels of grip strength. To bring it all together, you get the maximum benefits for reduction in all-cause mortality risk by having only intermediate strength. You don't see additional benefits from going from intermediate strength to high strength. But if you go from intermediate cardiorespiratory fitness to high cardiorespiratory fitness, you gain additional benefits and having high cardiorespiratory fitness yields a greater risk reduction than having intermediate or high muscle strength. So cardiorespiratory fitness gives you greater benefits than muscle strength and there's more to gain from going from intermediate level to high level of cardiorespiratory fitness. Again, you want to do both, but leveling up your cardiorespiratory fitness is better for longevity than leveling up your strength after the level of intermediate. And the point is also that if you are trying to build muscle and strength, you shouldn't neglect cardio because cardio gives you greater benefits. We previously talked about how being overweight but strong isn't good and the obesity attenuates the benefits you see from having higher muscle strength, 
However, that's not the case with cardiorespiratory fitness. Even obese individuals who have good cardiorespiratory fitness have a lower risk of mortality than normal weight individuals with poor cardiorespiratory fitness. A 2021 study saw that being unfit as reflected by cardiorespiratory fitness was linked to increased risk of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease even if you were normal weight. The obese individuals who were fit had a lower risk than those who were normal weight but not fit. However, the lowest risk was seen in those who were normal weight but with high cardiorespiratory fitness. So the best scenario is having normal body weight, lower body fat percentage, but also higher cardiorespiratory fitness and higher muscle strength. But again, you don't need to go to the elite level with your muscle strength. The benefits of muscle strength appear to cut off at the intermediate level, whereas you gain additional benefits by going from intermediate cardio to high cardio. It also means that cardiorespiratory fitness is so powerful that it can actually mitigate some of the negative effects of obesity, whereas you don't see that effect from strength training. All right, let's wrap up this video. Number one, muscle mass is important, but it's not as important as muscle strength and cardiorespiratory fitness. Number two, you do want to increase your muscle mass because it improves your metabolic health, but it also protects against the frailty of aging. If you're an older person and you see you have low muscle, then in a lot of cases, building more muscle should be your primary goal just to make sure you don't become too frail number three however otherwise adequately muscled and healthy individuals are much better off by focusing on muscle quality which is reflected by muscle strength and by focusing on cardiorespiratory fitness number four you want to train both strength and cardio and you can't say which one is ultimately better it depends on the age and the person but having higher cardiorespiratory fitness appears to provide a lot greater risk reduction than muscle mass and strength if you want to know my personal workout plan to improve these parameters then check out my evidence-based workout plan for longevity other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier thanks for watching my name is team stay optimized stay empowered